Welcome back to another edition of Auburn Film Room. I'm Lauren Sister, joined by Cole Kublik, and today we want to look back at Auburn's loss to Clemson. Everybody wants to talk about how great the defense was in that game, but what were some of the biggest takeaways from the offense that you saw? I tell you, Lauren, the, the things that I noticed offensively, it, it felt like there was confusion and congestion. And last time we were here going into the Clemson game, we talked about unpopulating the box, removing defenders from the tackle box to sort of open up and create space to be able to run the football. We'll see some examples of how that Clemson defense, like we thought and we talked about, jumps around a little bit, moves around to try to find ways to make plays. They were able to do that successfully, but also Auburn had some other opportunities, and I feel if they would have committed more to running the football between the tackles in more of a north-south fashion, there were opportunities for success, but too many substitutions, too many personnel group changes, and just no real rhyme or reason for how to get into a rhythm offensively in this game. I felt like Auburn did get a little bit of a rhythm late, and it just they, went, they ran out of time, honestly, to be able to put up enough points to match a great defensive performance. Now, Cole, you talked about Auburn having success at running the ball between the tackles. Do you have a few examples of that? Let's take a look here. Shotgun, pistol formation which is a little bit new for this offense. Didn't see a bunch of that last year, but watch defensive tackle for Clemson here. He's going to loop around, come around and make a play. And it's one of the areas that we highlighted as to maybe how Auburn could find some success. These defensive ends, Lauren, for Clemson, I believe Brent Vendables had them attack. So a lot of times in a zone read play, when the quarterback will go fake, he reads the defensive end. If he comes inside, He'll keep the ball and be able to run outside. If he plays upfield, he'll hand it off, and the back should have some space up underneath. I think these defensive ends were coached in this game to just attack upfield if they're not blocked. And you'll see an example of that here on the near side. Just attack, almost make a play, but it's one of the reasons Kerryon Johnson is able to slip underneath and make a big play. Watch the defensive tackle loops around. Defensive end attacks, and it's a nice cut late by Kerryon Johnson really to turn this into a pretty big game. It just goes to show you between the tackles, it was there for Auburn at times because Clemson plays high risk defense. They attacked off the edge. They're looping defensive tackles inside, which immediately opens up run lanes. I'm just not sure the commitment was there to stay with this and be able to find yards. And we'll take a look at the very next play. Carry on Johnson is going to get another opportunity, same formation. And we'll go back, take another look at the defensive end, attacking upfield when not blocked, and that allows Carryon Johnson time to slide right underneath and be able to make a play. One other thing, Lauren, that I want you to notice here. We talked about Clemson playing high-risk defense. First and 10, not many defenses will run games inside with their defensive tackles like Clemson will on first and 10. It's a way to find ways for them to create opportunities to make plays sort of confuse offensive linemen. Watch the interior of the defensive line here again, looping a man around, trying to find a way to make a play. Robert Left does a nice job of picking up a looping defensive tackle, carry on Johnson, a late cutback. You see the space it opens up there. It's a great angle here from the wide copy that we'll go back and we'll take a look at. Defensive tackle on the left, loops around, and all of a sudden, boom, look at the space that's opened up there. The opportunities inside for this Auburn run game were present, but you needed to unpopulate the box. You needed to make these defenders pay if they were going to attack. And if you were going to get this garbage inside, you had to be able to quickly go north and south to make this defense pay. And at times, it worked. Going back again, I just don't feel like the commitment to that for the entire game was there. Now, Cole, Auburn's offense obviously struggled. They were able to pick up some momentum, especially in the second half of the football game. A few explosive plays. One common denominator there, and which I saw, was Chandler Cox. He had a nice game. I, I did feel like at times throughout the game, he was asked to block Christian Wilkins one-on-one -on -one a few too many times. Because sometimes it was in the run game, other times it was in pass protection. Now, if Chandler Cox is an extra blocker and he's picking up something that turns loose or a blitzing linebacker, that's okay. But a glorified defensive tackle that's been moved to defensive end, so a guy is 300 pounds, 310 pounds, that's asking a lot out of a 225 pound H-back who's one of your athletic guys that you can flex out and do some different things with. That's a little too much, in my opinion, to ask him to do that 10, 12 times a game. But we'll take a look here at one of the examples. I thought pass protection up front was pretty good for the most part. Set up a nice pocket here. When Sean White would go direct drop back pass, 
I felt like the protection was good enough for him to be able to make plays. There were a couple breakdowns at right tackle, but all in all, it was pretty good. Now, Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, moved out to end. He's going to come rushing free. Now, we saw earlier in some of the run plays where Brent Venables is asking these players to attack upfield, north and south, so he's aggressive. I'd like to see Chandler Cox meet Christian Wilkins out here a little bit. That gives you a little bit of ground to be able to make up an error if you have one and potentially for Sean White to maneuver a couple different ways in the pocket. Don't wait for him to come out, attack that defender a little bit further out, and you'll help develop the pocket. Nonetheless, it's a good pickup late, and Sean White has to maneuver at the last second, and I think that's why this ball comes up short, but it ends up being a nice pickup. See the pocket up front by the offensive line. See how he had to avoid Chandler Cox there a little bit late, Lauren? That's why I would like to see if we run it back here shortly. That's why I told you before, I want to see Chandler Cox come out here and meet this defensive end. Come meet me out here. That way, if he cuts back inside, Sean White can maneuver outside. If he wants to cut it wide and potentially kind of speed rush, dip and rip, then Sean White can step up in the pocket and have a clear angle to be able to deliver this football. It's a pretty good pickup late, but that last little second that Sean White has to avoid Christian Wilkins, I think is what forced this ball to be short and possibly could it end up being a touchdown. Now, Cole, Auburn's lone touchdown came from Kerryon Johnson and the Wildcat. What did you see from that play? Uh, once again, Chandler Cox, another common denominator in his blocking scheme. Jeremy Johnson on the field. So you'll get that jet sweep motion, which is going to remove a defender and kind of occupy some of the other defenders. But Chandler Cox, a nice job here of redirecting, showing good body control when he comes out on this block. You'll see at the last minute, kind of overruns a little bit and then redirects and gets a little bit in a secondary fashion on the Clemson defender. This will be a good look right here. Nice block by Darius Slayton there at wide receiver. And there you see Chandler Cox kind of come back. Good kick out by Alex Kozan at the top. It's a good angle right here from the end zone. We'll take another look. Kozan, nice kick out. Slayton with the wall off. And Chandler Cox kind of chips and then redirects back to be able to get just enough to open up that lane for on Johnson to run through. Only touchdown of the game for Auburn. Direct snap to on Johnson. The only direct snap he took in this game ended off paying off big dividends inside the 10-yard line for Auburn. Now, Gus Malzahn said this week, Sean White will be the starter. John Franklin III will be coming in off the bench. Your thoughts on what needs to happen offensively for this team to, to click on all cylinders and, and produce uh, you know, a, a better performance than they did this past weekend? Well, I, I think saying, okay, Sean White's our starter. We're going to go with him. John Franklin gets reps with the twos. Maybe implying that Jeremy Johnson takes a back seat for now. And Gus Malzahn admitted going in, we thought playing three quarterbacks could be successful. I think we saw in the game that's not going to be successful. Like we talked about earlier in, in, in this broadcast, confusion and too much traffic really within the run game. So get into a flow, get into a rhythm a little bit earlier, maybe pick up the pace a little bit. And when you're running guys on and off the field, you can't do that. You name Sean White your quarterback, but you don't really give him a shot to go out there and just be the quarterback. So I think maybe Gus Malzahn is a step in the right direction of easing some of the tension within substitutions, easing some of the confusion within guys running in and out, calling different plays, who has command of the huddle, how they're managing the huddle. And by making John Franklin the number two, you still leave the option open for him to have a package. And he's getting the two reps. I'll be honest, there's no really three reps going around once you begin the season. Third string quarterback's not getting reps in a season. Second string quarterback should not be getting as many reps as the ones. The ones should get about 80% of the reps in practice. The twos get maybe 20, 30% of the reps. And the threes don't get reps. They're over on the scout team. So if that's how you're going to sort of divide your reps moving forward, there might not be much space for Jeremy Johnson. And that's why you heard Gus Malzahn mention that he's probably going to be moving towards the back and hopefully wants to go with just those two guys because I think it makes this offense a little more, a little more simple to manage.